The following is a presentation of Unidentified Entertainment and 22nd Century Radio. Manassas, Fairfax, Washington, D.C. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm still here. One more segment. Hashtag Tiangong Down. Contest about the crash of the Chinese space station, the impending crash of that Tiangong 1 segment of the Chinese space station. Find us on Twitter at Time and Space US. Look for those hashtags and enter the contest. You can win Litecoin prizes. We also have hashtag Russia18 picks. You can check that out as well, the upcoming World Cup. So I'm pulling up this link from an old Washington Post story that I think offers, let's say, an alternate line of reasoning about this Space Force discussion. See, you know, you go back to 2010 and you have these remarks by Stephen Hawking. And he's imagining a different civilization, another possibly extraterrestrial civilization. Uh, and that, that's, you know, the way in which we might end up encountering them. Then you end up with this really this hacker case with McKinnon that goes back all the way I think to 2006 possibly even earlier and uh, it provides a little bit different context here's a guy claiming he hacked into these computers and found evidence that maybe there was already some sort of a space force fast forward to 2018 just a few days ago and now you have the president of the United States talking about creating such a space force which, for all we know, may already be in place, right? Maybe Trump doesn't even know that. Who knows? But it brought to mind some of the work and the research that I had done as, you know, a UFO investigator. It's a, it's a much broader field than that, but perhaps in this context, at least at the time, I'm thinking of the X conference in 2009 that I had attended and conducted interviews at, you know, McKinnon was a topic, and that came up in some of the interviews and provided some interesting perspective from the researchers that I was interviewing. One of those perspectives was related to an Area 51 story. Everybody's familiar with Area 51. But let's put all the jokes aside for a minute and look at the real application of that place you know, by by the government that we you have to understand that we're we're working past the mythology here. We're just dealing with the facts that we know about. Okay, so just very quickly, everybody's familiar with the even the phrase Area 51, and apparently it re it refers to a facility out in Nevada somewhere, a, a place sometimes referred to as Groom Lake. It's easy to look it up and figure out what this place is. The article that I'm looking at from the Post, I'm not going to sit here and quote, try to quote from it because there's another layer here that I'm trying to talk about. I'll provide this link. It's actually a tough read because one, it's sort of a long article, but two, it's gut-wrenching. It's really hard to read. The, the things that these people went through are frankly disgusting and sad. And so what happened here was that a group of people who were working at this facility ended up being exposed to something. The majority of them, I believe, at this point have already died. Um, and this article, um, amazingly, this link that I'm looking at, you know, it says 2013. I think this original article goes all the way back to 1997. Um, there was a, a class action lawsuit, if you will, filed against the federal government to try to help these people who had been exposed to whatever they had been exposed to, something to do with uh, jet fuel. And what happened was that they couldn't get anywhere with the lawsuits because they were trying to sue on behalf of workers working at a facility that the government would not admit even existed. And if the facility doesn't actually exist, there can't be a lawsuit. 
and everything else gets thrown out the window. To give you a sense of just how serious the government was about this, the president, again, non-political here, doesn't matter who the president is or was, and at the time of this article we're talking about Clinton, Bill Clinton, that's how far back we're going, okay? The president himself had to continually authorize, annually, if I read the material correctly, annually, every year, the president has to reauthorize this piece of national security legislation that is not acknowledging the existence of this facility. And as a result, as collateral damage, these people not only died from this poisonous smoke and hazardous waste, but they had no recourse whatsoever. Despite having, you know, I, I believe from this article that I'm reading, Jonathan Turley, uh, who's a name that I think a lot of people would know, was the lead attorney attempting to work on this case. Now there's follow-up to this story that I'm telling you, and you can look it up and read it. I'm looking back at this Post piece, this Washington Post piece, which itself was apparently revisiting a story from the 1990s. And again, I'll provide the link. Hopefully what you're doing, though, is following my logic here that even if there was something called a space force, it is very unlikely that we would understand or know what was going on. And it just really opens up, I, I think, a Pandora's box, a, a, a big you know, avenue of you could chase a bunch of bouncing shiny balls, you could chase, chase the rabbit, as they say, in Pacific Rim, in the movie Pacific Rim, if you're familiar with that phrase, chasing the rabbit. Um, you know, there's a lot to chase here. There's a lot of things to chase. But I think when you go back and look at the breaking news just from the past week, the president talking about the creation of something that very well might already exist, I'm not sure that a lot of people would understand that in hearing the story. So I thought I would provide the additional context to maybe stop and consider what it is that he's describing uh, not only might already exist, I, I think there's a lot more to consider from that point on. So uh, I'll provide as many links as possible. I hope it's going to be a lot of work to get this posted because I ended up chasing a bunch of different stories that I didn't mean to, to chase. I had written a completely different script and maybe I'll be able to get to that next week without a bunch of other stuff breaking. But I thought it was worth it to double back on some of our older episodes, uh, even as useless as they might be, they're at least reference points to say, hey, we covered this you know, almost 10 years ago, uh, and to provide additional context for some of that breaking news. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed those segments. Uh, I've repeated multiple times the contest. So just look up the information on Twitter. Our address is at Time and Space US. Hashtag Tiangong Down. Hashtag Russia 18 picks. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to get in touch with us, and we'll post some more stuff next week. Twenty-second Century Radio.